beam engine like this is a magnificent sight and in the days of Queen Victoria as well as being used to provide power for industry engines like this started to bring improvements to domestic life. As the Industrial Revolution progressed and the population grew, the demand for clean water grew as well. Because it provided such an efficient method of pumping water, the beam engine became the basic working machine of the water industry. And it was with the building of pumping stations in the 19th century that the beam engine technology reached its peak. Tees Cottage Pumping Station is on the River Tees at Darlington. My little balancing act demonstrates the smoothness of the precision engineering. It's stuck on with super glue, Fred, and it's really a bit of a kidology, you know, for the kiss. Yeah. It's not right, but... Never. I don't think it's stuck on, that. You don't reckon? Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> thing is, he's getting it back on. <laughs> Here goes. Hey. First time, how about that, Zed? That was good. Tees Cottage is interesting because you can see here the beginning of the demise of the beam engine. Because just next door there's a gas pumping engine that worked alongside the beam engine from 1914 before replacing it completely in 1926. It's quite a rare engine, the Science Museum likes this engine. Yeah. I must say, I've never seen a gas engine as big as this. Well, it's a big fella. It's yeah. one of the bigger ones in the country. Yeah. And we got this running all oh, about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. And quite a risky business, because we mm. thought we were going to put all the gas heating out down Connors Cliff Road. Oh, yeah. Or cooking the turkeys. Or cooking yeah. the turkeys. <laughs> Nothing coming out of the gas cookers. Ah, yeah. But this In spite of new types of engines like this one being introduced, the steam engine didn't just disappear. Smaller engines were used for the manufacture of all sorts of domestic products. I found an interesting example of this when I did a restoration job up near Penrith. This is Wetherick's Country Pottery in Cumbria. And this wonderful thing behind me here is a blunger. And a blunger, I thought they were kidding me when they mentioned, like, blunger, but that's its real name. And believe it or not, this is the last steam-driven one in existence. And when I came here about five years ago, the thing were, like, ready for falling into the, into the pit, which mixes the clay up. And, it, and its, it's whole sort of function is... Over the road there, there were a big clay pit in the olden days, and they dug out the clay, which had contained a lot of pebbles, and they put it in this pit and added water and then started off the machinery, and it stirred it all up till it were like our own milk chocolate, and the stones fell to the bottom, and then they, they, they pumped off the, the liquid clay off the top, and it went down into a lagoon over the back here, where when, they pumped, when it had settled, the clay settled on the bottom, and the water became fairly clear, they pumped the water off the top, back up the hill again, and sort of, when the clay had set, they, they dug it out in big blocks, and brought it up here and made the pots out of it. And really, it's 